Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Syracuse Sports presented by Krause Health, the official healthcare partner for SU Athletics. We interrupt transfer portal season and March Madness and everything else going on because football, friends, is back on the table. Syracuse football spring practice starts this week, and it feels like the season never end, given the crazy offseason that has happened with Syracuse football, but we're going to see some real football stuff uh, upcoming here in our first glance at a lot of things when it comes to Syracuse football. Emily Liker from Syracuse.com back here on the pod. And Emily, we have done so much in the off season about this team and the comings and goings and the new coaches and the new players and everything's got that new car smell, but we're going to actually see some football this week as uh, spring football gets underway. You ready to go? Yeah. You know, it, it's, it definitely kind of hit, me this week like I knew it was coming but then Monday came and I was like oh my god spring football starts this week and so <laughs> I'm glad it didn't it's not starting until Thursday so I still I still have like 24 hours to kind of get zen and get ready to go <laughs> take a deep breath and get into it and Emily and I are going to pod pretty much twice a week through spring ball mm -hmm. first one as we speak now the preview and then there's a nice little rhythm of practice and availabilities we're going to hear from coaches and players. You're certainly going to hear those voices on the podcast as well. So we'll get a nice steady rhythm here. Over the next month, the spring game is April 20th. That's going to be, I think, the most anticipated spring game ever. I think it's going to be the most highly attended spring game in history, uh, given that it's also a doubleheader with uh, the final lacrosse game of the season against Virginia for men's lacrosse. And they're going to honor Paul Gate that day. So that's a huge Saturday in and of itself, let alone the fever pitch that's surrounding this football team right now. But a lot to cover in spring practice before we get there. Now, before we dive into some spring football questions, there was also a pro day this week up at Ensley for Syracuse football. So, Emily, for those that didn't get a chance to see what happened there this week. Who was there for Syracuse? And uh, tell us how they did. Yeah, so there's seven guys there for Syracuse. Um, Isaiah Johnson, who's who was the sole NFL Combine invite this year. We'll talk about him. Uh, Garrett Schrader, Caleb Bokuchukwu, Chris Bleich, Jason Simmons Jr., Yosuke Sugano. I think that's all seven. Did I get all seven? I believe so. Um, Marcus Adams? Demarcus Adams. And yes, the, there's the seven. One more. There we yeah. go. Yep. Yeah, there's the seventh. So, yeah, I mean, good mix of guys, good mix of positions. Um, Garrett Schrader didn't do any working out. He was measured and he interviewed with teams, but he is still in the midst of his recovery from his shoulder, shoulder surgery that we found out about in December and that he had in December, or maybe end of November, if we're speaking technically. Um, that recovery is going to take him through july-ish or june i think he said is when he'll be like a hundred percent he he'll get back to throwing a little bit within the next couple weeks but that's kind of the marker for when they expect him to be kind of completely full go again but then he also revealed that he had a a foot surgery at some point uh, that was we we i didn't know about and so uh he's also recovering from that and that has like a may may 100 percent timeline so he was out but he was gracious enough to talk with us um, talked about what teams are seeing with him. And I think, you know, he, he's not one of those guys in this group that has like a, a huge chance at, at landing on an NFL roster. Like if he does, like he might get a practice squad shot, uh, something like that. Um, but it was interesting. He, he did say that some teams are considering him for like a, a Taysom Hill type role, which Taysom Hill has played tight end. He's played quarterback at, at the NFL level, or at least been rostered at those positions. And Taysom Hill is another Jason Beck guy. So I thought that comparison was, was apt for Garrett. Makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Unfortunately, uh, Caleb Okachuku uh, pulled up on a, on a 40 yard dash, mm -hmm. right. And has a little bit of an injury situation. Did he do anything else uh, before and after that at pro day? Yeah, it, it was, it was awful. I mean, you could feel everyone in the room kind of just like exhale in like uh, oh gosh this is like Caleb's just one of those guys that it's kind of impossible not to to root for he's a fan base favorite he was always great with the media um and this was this was a real big opportunity for him um and yeah it, it was it was tough he he was about 20 yards in and something happened with his hamstring completely pulled up on it and we did not see him the rest of the day um I mean he was around on the sideline but he did not participate in anything, didn't talk to us, which I completely understand. Um, now, it, it 
like I don't know how serious it is, but he does still have a month to potentially do private workouts or go to um, workouts with teams in other places. I don't know if that was already on his schedule, um, having not talked to him yesterday, but it was certainly a, a tough break for him seeing that happen. Yeah, that's a tough break, especially he's so he's so easy to root for, and you just you don't want any little thing to pop up that can hold you back. He's already kind of trying to fight his way into either being drafted or being considered as a free agent, and you know you don't want injuries or anything like that lingering. So we certainly wish Caleb the best in his opportunity there. Emily, who do you think helped themselves with this pro day? You mentioned Isaiah was the only one that had – a combine so for a lot of guys this was kind of their big opportunity to show before what did it end up being about 25 26 nfl teams there yesterday yeah it was it was upward of 25 there wasn't an exact count i was of course trying to count but there's a lot of other people that get let in the facility oh, for this for sure. and lo logos are tiny and you're you're secluded off in like one corner of the facility where you can watch from and and stuff like that but it was it, i did confirm it was it was upward of 25 um team so that's a that's a pretty good showing um in terms of who impressed me the most I think like someone that just stood out in the pack that I wasn't really expecting was Jason Simmons Jr he looked really fast in the 40 I don't believe he dropped any balls when they were doing position work with the DBs um just looked really consistent uh which he had some struggles during the season so he definitely was someone that I I was a little um surprised by to see out there but I thought he he did really well and we don't have any of the times unfortunately so like I can't tell you for sure he was the fastest among SU's contingent but um just eye test it seemed like he was and then touching on Isaiah Johnson for a second I mean he he's the guy that's most likely to get drafted um and if not drafted then definitely like picked up by a team as an undrafted free agent and his big thing coming into yesterday was wanting to improve his 40 time. He said he was among the slowest at the combine and in that cornerback group. I think he ran a, he ran a 4.64. And again, we don't have numbers from yesterday. They didn't release them, but a release from the school did say that he improved his, his 40 time running that yesterday. So. And you wrote about this, Emily, I think something that could help Isaiah is he is a very charismatic and I think you've got to win in the interview room too. I mean, you know, football and certainly the athletic skills you have and all these things that they're going through all these drills on, but you can really talk yourself into a team taking a chance on you. And it feels like he really impressed some teams in that process. Right. I mean, you know, the interview is, is one of the biggest parts and it's not something we see. We kind of just have to get a, a feeling of what teams are thinking from what we see from other media outlets or what players and prospects are willing to tell us. But um, I mean, certainly he went to uh, he went to Dartmouth. Right. That's where he was before. And so, I mean, he's a very educated guy um, and he's just like fun. Like he came up to us and he you could tell he was having a good time yesterday and was excited to be there. He mentioned the fact he hadn't been around any of his teammates or the facility in a couple months, he's been training um, down in Florida and then back home in Detroit. And so he was like, it's good to be around everyone and know that like, no matter what happened today, people were going to have my back. And so he, he's certainly a guy that um, I think is also kind of on the hard not to root for list in terms yeah. of Syracuse um, alumni now. And, and I'll be, I'll be curious to see if he gets drafted, where he lands either way. And I think too, if, if that team moves him to safety, which is a possibility that we've heard from analysts and that he said he's heard from teams as well. All right. So that's pro day flipping the calendar here and the page to Syracuse football spring practice. They're going to have about three practices a week from now until April 20th, which again is the spring game at the JMA wireless dome. It's a seven o'clock uh, kick for that, which Fran Brown promises, Emily, uh, will be an actual football game. So yeah. it be interesting to get his perspective and the player's perspective on that leading into the spring game. So here's my first question about spring practice, and I will answer first. What are we anticipating the most? I am anticipating hearing the voices of assistant coaches. <laughs> yeah. And what a time to be alive. We get to talk to the other coaches. And I like how Syracuse is doing this. Every assistant coach is going to be made available. Like they're each going to have a day, basically. So what right. happens is when we go to media availabilities, it'll be Fran Brown and offensive players or Elijah Robinson, the defensive coordinator and certain players. And you kind of go through this rhythm. So each assistant 
is going to kind of get their own day, right? And mm-hmm. for a lot of cases, it's it's going to be like a formal introduction between us and them and getting to ask about why they came to Syracuse and their connection with Fran Brown and what they've already done here and, you know, actually getting to talk some football as we go through spring practice and how they analyze this team. So, look, as much as the head coach is the voice and he's the guy, assistant coaches offer a unique perspective Oftentimes I've run into coaches through the years, Emily, like that's a great audition for them to be head coaches, to deal with the media and to Tim Lester comes to mind right away. Somebody who was an assistant coach, an offensive coordinator here at Syracuse. And you could just tell that guy wanted to be a head coach and he used those opportunities to talk football. And frankly, two or three times, he told me some stuff you probably shouldn't have. Right. And he, he <laughs> said that to me. Right. But Fran Brown recognizes that he understands Mm -hmm. and wants these guys to be head coaches. It was always one of the more ridiculous policies, frankly, that Dino Babers had that he was the sole voice in the media. So I'm looking forward to getting to know these assistant coaches and not just from our standpoint as reporters, the fans get to hear the voice and what these guys are like and what their coaching philosophies are and what their favorite restaurants are in Syracuse, right? Like this is stuff that people want to know. Right. And it's not just assistant coaches we get to talk to either. There's a couple other like outside staffer kind of positions, off field staffers like this week. The, this week, the first coach we get to talk to besides Brown is is the strength and conditioning staff, which I'm super excited for. Obviously, those are the guys who have been doing most of the work these past two months with the team. Um, the coaches haven't really been around just because of NCAA policies and stuff. And then later in the season um, or in the spring slate, we get to talk to the general manager, which is a position that we really have no idea what his job duties are going to be. That's right. It kind of could mean a lot of things. Um, I think that'll be a really interesting conversation with him and then unpacking it afterwards. Get to talk to some key recruiting staffers. Uh, That'll be nice as well. Just obviously with the focus on recruiting. So yeah, that's, that's a good pick. I am also very excited about that. How about you though? What are you anticipating the most here as the spring practice kicks off? Yeah, you know, knowing that we're going to talk about Kyle McCord in a little bit, I, I I veered in a different direction, and I I'm just interested at this point to get a feel for Fran's coaching style because obviously so much, almost all of what we've heard and learned about him so far is Fran Brown, the recruiter. This is our first glimpse into how he is as an on-field coach and not just as an on-field coach, but as a head coach too, right? Because he's only ever been a position coach before this. He hasn't even been a a coordinator before this. So this is going to be his first time leading a a program like this on field. And I know he's already mentioned in um, some interviews, like how much he's learned about what comes with the head coaching job, but I'm curious how he approaches it with the on-field in the on-field aspect, you know, with Dino, at least in in the two years that I was here and he was here, it was always he he was pretty removed. Um, like he would he would stand and watch and kind of observe all the position groups. You might see him go over and, and chat with people, um, but he was usually pretty quiet at practice and and just observing and letting position coaches handle things. Now every once in a while we saw we saw a flare up. There was a moment last spring where he yeah. got pretty heated with the offense and the quarterbacks, but. That was generally his demeanor. So I, I'm interested, is Fran a hands-on guy? Is he going to stand back and let his position coaches do the work as well? I think it'll be something to watch. The most intriguing positions to watch, and look, you got to start with the obvious one here, QB1. How does Kyle McCord look? How does he lead the team? Remember, Kyle, and we'll talk to him about this, had a little off-season surgery. He was seen at some Syracuse football, or pardon me, basketball games at the Dome with a boot on his foot. Remember, he played a lot of the season last year with an injured foot. We think he's good to go. We think he's going to be a full goal for spring practice. Or I'm I'm not sure how cautious they're going to be, what his reps are going to be like. But just QB1 is intriguing, but also QB2 is intriguing. There's Carlos Del Rio Wilson still on the team. He was throwing at Pro Day the other day. Braden Davis, who the prior coaching staff, and there's a couple holdovers there, notably Nunzio Campanelli, who's now the quarterback coach, basically wouldn't let this guy throw the football down the stretch and that, you know, the, the offense we saw with LaQuinn Allen and Dan Valari doing a little bit of everything. So that's obvious. The offensive line is always one to watch, particularly with the type of quarterback you have now in McCord, who is not a mobile guy. He's a pocket quarterback by definition. The size on the defensive line that they have brought in, Emily, is intriguing to me. You're basically just reshuffling the entire defensive line. I think wide receiver 
is intriguing and you got a couple holdovers but a lot of new blood there and who kind of wins those competitions i mean a lot of positions i think fit this description as the most intriguing to watch but i'm just gonna go with the obvious one qb1 and what the quarterbacks look like it's the most important one and it's it's basically a whole new room in, in a lot of ways yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say let's let's kind of break that down and, and talk about it a little bit. Obviously, you mentioned Carlos Dovio Wilson is back. Um, he he was the one that was passing for the pro day prospects yesterday. He was injured three months ago and seemingly was fine yesterday. I, I didn't see um, like a brace on him or anything like that. I, again, I was kind of far away from him, but nothing too obvious that like would have been like oh he might not be available, whatever. Um, so curious to hear what what that was with him. And, you know, he's been a guy that Syracuse fans have not always loved, um, has not always performed the greatest. I think he's he's pretty inconsistent. So it'll be interesting to see how maybe this new staff, maybe working with Campanelli can correct that, if they can correct that. Um, but it'll be him and Davis and Kyle McCord are the only three around for spring. Syracuse will add Jakari Williams, which is their – three, four-star rated prospect, um, and then A.J. Miller, the preferred walk-on in the summer, which kind of gives that QB class a depth to it that um, hasn't been, like, lacking the last few years. But, like, I think having a, a freshman, a true freshman in there that is potentially competing on the come-up for the role, it, it adds a different element to, like, the QB2 competition like I I don't think Williams is going to like land on the depth chart this season necessarily but it it creates a lot more fire under the butts of CDRW and and Davis I think which is interesting there's a lot of new faces on this team Emily as we saw with a new coaching staff they in just a when they arrived had three weeks basically in the portal to bring in players and they hit it hard McCourt being the most notable player there. But just to name a few, Fidel Diggs, Isaiah Hastings, Yasid Haynes, Demetrius Witherspoon, Deion Wilson, Marcellus Barnes, uh, James Hurd, who I think is for some reason kind of been underrated in this discussion, but could step right in and start at linebacker for this team. Right. And I think will. Uh, and meet. Our old friend, same as the old friend, Deuce Chestnut, remember his back on this roster. Right. After going to LSU, he kind of flamed out at LSU. At one point, he was in a high-profile game at the beginning of the season, and he was out there for LSU. And then by like the middle of the season, we were wondering if he was still on the team. And then lo and behold, at the stroke of midnight on New Year's Eve into New Year's Day, he puts out the announcement that he's coming back to Syracuse. So... I'm really intrigued by this old guard, new guard competition. And let's be honest here, Emily, we don't have the roster as we speak, but I wasn't a math major. I don't know if you were either, but they, they have too many players. So there's going to be cuts after spring. And there's always the natural attrition to get from the transfer portal in football, which reopens uh, April 16th. So the last few days of spring ball. So just, all the old new intrigue and kind of trying to figure out who could even be on this team when spring practice is over is going to be fascinating to watch. Right. Like they're this spring spring is taking on like a a whole new meaning for Syracuse football this year than it, than it has in previous years. Like spring is a competition for everyone. Like there is no promise save for, I think, seven of the returning guys like that anyone from last year's roster is necessarily getting kept like we saw we saw the number one leading receiver from Syracuse last year Damian Alford get dismissed by Fran before spring practice even started um and and that's something we still need to get a little clarity from Brown on if he'll offer it on why that happened and and how that happened but you know outside of guys like I would I would say there's there's tier one Rondé Gadsden. You know you're not getting rid of him. You have to be crazy to get rid of him. <laughs> and then there's then there's tier two, which I would say is like LaQuinn Allen, Dan Villari, Marlo Wax, Justin Barron. I think that's that's probably everyone I'd include in that tier. That are Elijah like those, Clark. I would put Elijah on Clark. Yeah. yeah, Elijah Clark. That's yep. a good addition. Um, which, by the way, reminder that a number of those players could have been a pro day 
the other day, but decided right. to come back to Syracuse. Yeah. Yeah. So those are guys that that chose to stick around for the most part or or needed to stick around for another year. And and I don't think you would get rid of, but like everyone else, like you're competing for a spot. And there are a few position groups on here where we've seen a lot of additions Fran has brought in either at true freshman 2024 guys or through the transfer portal that I, I think we are going to see cut. I think one of them that's really intriguing to me is the, is the linebacking core because it seems pretty likely they're going to shift to a, a four, two, five or something akin to that, where there's going to be fewer linebackers on, on the field than the three, three, five that we've seen in the past. And the linebacking room is, is kind of stacked with talent, but if you know, you're not going to get as much playing time, why would you stick around? Like I, you got, you got wax. Who's a guaranteed starter. I think herd will compete with, McDonald, Sparrow, maybe um, Caden Bailey has kind of been on the come up the past two years. Um, but then some of those guys farther down the position group, like not as likely you're going to see the field. You might get out. Wide receiver is another group that they brought in a lot of people at. Tight ends. There's quite a few. There was like two or three additions just in the 2024 class alone. So, yeah, spring, spring camp. And a spring camp is going to be brutal. The portal opens a couple days before it's over, and I would not be surprised if there's some departures like as as soon as it opens. As far as uh, guys coming back from injury that can make a difference, there's there's two that pop here and, and fill in any blanks I'm missing here, Emily. Dave Wollabaugh on the offensive line should be back out there. And, you know, it became like a, a, a weekly intrigue of where Trevor Pena was going to be on the depth chart last season. He adds to... What is, I, I wouldn't put him on those tiers of guys that we mentioned earlier that are just going to be kind of automatic. I think he's going to have to earn his way with this with this coaching staff. But he comes back from injury as well. And Am I missing anybody else, notably from last year, that was kind of off the radar but coming back? Yeah, well, obviously Gadsden is coming back from his injury, and right. we, we won't see much of him this spring. Um, Denis Jacquez, we mentioned the defensive line and how that's going to be a little bit of an interesting competition. I think he had his um, upper body arm injury there. That was what game was that? I think that was the UNC game. Maybe. Yeah. UNC yeah, somewhere, right somewhere that. in that road stretch. I think it was UNC. Uh, there's so many injuries again last year that they all blend together. Um, he's kind of the other, the only other one, but yeah, you know, Pena is interesting because we know nothing about what his injury was. Like all of these other guys, like Gadsden, we knew was the Liz Frank, Wollabaugh. It was obvious that it was his foot ankle because he had a boot on and all that stuff. Jaquez had a, a brace on his upper body. Chase Simmons, who's another one who kind of spent the whole season injured, a uh, brace on his upper body. Kalen Ellis. Kalen Ellis, I guess, is another big name that um, missed a lot of the year last year on the offensive line. He had his boot. But Pina, there was never any indication. And you know what I realized? I don't think I have talked to Trevor Pino once in the two years that I've been here. <laughs> because I think, I, if I recall, he was also a little off and on during the 2022 season. Yes, so right. we'll see when, when we get there Thursday uh, what his situation is. And he's kind of early in our request list of people we are hoping to talk to. So hopefully we get some answers about Trevor Pina. One thing, and you mentioned the training staff is going to be one of the first uh, other assistant coaches we get to talk to. And naturally, when you come into spring, that conversation always starts about, oh, he looks bigger, right? This guy's gained 20 pounds, and you kind of hear some of these things. But I am really intrigued by size on this roster because our colleague Chris Carlson wrote a great story about Grambling transfer Cody Hornsby, 6'3", 315 pounds, competing for the left guard position right? You have uh, Hastings, 6'4", 290. Dion Wilson, if I recall correctly, his nickname's The Tank, 6'5", yes. 300. Like, these are the type of players that you need in the trenches to be competitive in the ACC, to take Syracuse that next step. And it's not that the Orange weren't getting these type of players. We're starting to see more bulk on the offensive line and a, and a few here and there on the defensive line. But I think that's really going to hit me when we walk into that first couple of practices and it's just a noticeable difference you're going to see, particularly on the on the defensive line. So that that's something I'm really intrigued by. And our Syracuse Sports Insiders, when I put out the text of those guys, kind of letting them know, hey, we're going to be doing this and spring practices on the way. 
Got a lot of questions about scheme, Emily. What's the offensive scheme? What is Jeff Nixon going to be doing offensively? What is Elijah Robinson going to be doing defensively? Maybe a little early to get some details on that. And if football coaches are football coaches, they like to hide that as much as possible, (laughs) right? But you and I talked to Jeff Nixon on this podcast not long ago, so everybody can go look that up from a few weeks ago. And he does want to bring in a pro-style offense. He does want to throw to the tight end, which warms my heart. We mentioned all these receivers that they've got to sort out here. And you have a pocket quarterback in Kyle McCord. Plus, Nixon coached at Baylor with Matt Rule in 2019. You can kind of see what he did there. It's interesting that McCord... The other possibility we heard was he would go to Nebraska with Matt Ray. So there must be Mm -hmm. something about this offense that he really likes. With Robinson, there are some changes there. The scheme is going to be different. This is not going to be the 3-3-5, certainly, that Tony White installed here at first and Syracuse continued as we went along here. But what are early thoughts on scheme in that there are things that do get installed in spring practice? This is all not just, you know, drills and, and refreshing football things. Yeah, you know, again, it, it's it's hard to to predict because we have not seen a single snap or any lineup of, of these players yet. Um, but I mean, you know, I, I think they certainly have the the personnel to run twelve man on offense or, or twenty one man on offense as well. I think with with running like a dual running back situation, if they were to do that, which. Nixon also has experience working with really talented running backs. He worked with Christian McCaffrey when he was in in Carolina, um, a couple other big names. And you have Saquon Laquin Barkley, Allen. Yeah. Saquon Barkley, and you have LaQuinn Allen sitting here, who we were just speaking of bulking up and, and big guys. He's put on some muscle. If you've seen a picture of LaQuinn Allen <laughs> and you go back and think back to what he looked like when he arrived yeah. two seasons ago. Could light a match on that dude right now. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. He I was like, oh my God, he looks like Sean Tucker now. Like <laughs> Sean Tucker looked yeah. like when I came in and and started watching. But um yeah, you know, I mean, th- there is so much talent across the board on this offense that I think there are a lot of different ways Nixon could utilize it. But again, just everything comes back to how strong the offensive line is and and how protected they can keep Kyle because I think if they can keep Kyle protected like go to Aronde Gadsden all day go to Dan Villari all day go to your two Georgia transfer wide receivers all day and then use use LaQuint to pick up kind of short yardage stuff or, or a breakaway when he needs it um but yeah that that's certainly something that we will continue talking to the audience about as we we see more and and the scheme in general and on the defensive side, you know, I think just the big thing is like Robinson's like a defensive line coach. So like, this is going to be a very defensive line focused scheme. We know it, we, I'm pretty sure no for certain it's going to be like a four down front. Most of the time. Now I know he said kind of like whatever personnel is best we'll have on the field, but we've seen how many D linemen they've brought in, how many edge rushers they've brought in. And it certainly seems like they are there's leaning towards here. that. Yeah. yeah. There's that heavier, that heavier down front. So uh, it'll be, it'll be some changes from what we've seen on both sides of the ball, but, but that's exciting, I think. So throughout spring practice, and you see it on your screen there, if you're watching on YouTube, we want to hear from our Syracuse sports insiders about what you want Emily and I to look forward practice, what you want us to ask these players. And as noted, we get to talk to the assistant coaches in addition to Coach Brown, what you want us to ask him. Get in touch on our Syracuse Sports Insider text line by texting the word orange to 315-847-3895. You get direct access to me. Ask anytime your opinions, your thoughts, whatever's on your mind with Syracuse Spring football. Of course, the transfer portal and basketball, lacrosse in full swing, Syracuse women's basketball and the NCAA tournament. It is a very busy time, and you can stay connected as a Syracuse sports insider. Join today. It's uh, two weeks free. Try it out. See how you like it. And then it's just $3.99 a month after that. Emily, I am uh, looking forward to spring practice. This is going to be intriguing. As you said, this is not going to be your typical spring practice at Syracuse. There's a lot of hype and buildup and intrigue in what's going on. And we will be all over it for you both here on the Syracuse Sports Podcast and on Syracuse.com. Thank you, Emily. I'll see you on the field. And we'll see you in uh, a number of podcasts we got coming up for everybody during spring practice. For sure. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.